For today's Business Matters, we have Don Ma here with us. Don, it's good to see you. What's happening today in the world of business? Yeah, good to see you guys as well. So let me start off with Boeing, actually. So what's happening is that uh, talks broke down between Boeing and the Machinist Union. Uh, the company withdrew a pay raise offer for striking workers. No new talks with their union are scheduled. Over 30,000 workers have been on strike for three weeks. The International Association of Machinists see a 40%, uh, they seek rather a 40% pay raise over four years. They also aim to restore a pension plan workers lost 10 years ago. And the head of Boeing's commercial planes business told workers that the union did not seriously consider the company's proposals, added, adding further negotiations do not make sense. S&P said yesterday that it placed Boeing's uh, credit on a uh, rating on Credit Watch negative. It says the company will likely seek incremental funding. And Honda is recalling about 1.7 million vehicles in the U.S. Uh, difficulty in steering on certain models could increase the risk of a crash, and the recall includes some of its more famous vehicles from model years 2022 to 25. Dealers will make the necessary repairs at no charge. As well, Brazil's Supreme Court lifted a ban on social media platform X yesterday. It happened after the social media platform reversed course. It paid fines, appointed a local representative, and blocked accounts flagged by a Brazilian court. And the platform had been suspended in Brazil since late August, you remember that. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Alexander de Moraes gave X the green light to resume operations in the country effective immediately. Musk had been locked in a months-long feud with the judge. And Brazil is X's sixth biggest market globally, has more than 21 million users there. Now, losses from Hurricane Milton could reach as much as $100 billion for the global insurance industry. And this could create a surge in 2025 reinsurance prices that could boost some insurance companies' shares. So if Milton makes direct landfall in the densely populated Tampa area, analysts at Morningstar DBRS estimate between 60 to $100 billion in losses, and this would put Milton on par with Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. The Category 5 hurricane is expected to reach the Gulf Coast of Florida this evening or early tomorrow, targeting a, an area still recovering from Hurricane Helene that hit less than two weeks ago. In response to the rising losses from natural disasters, insurance, uh, insurers and reinsurers who insure the insurers raised rates and excluded higher risk business. And widening U.S. budget deficits and inflationary trade policies after the presidential election could weigh on U.S. government bonds. So bond-focused management firm PIMCO uh, is expecting a so-called soft landing for the U.S. economy as inflation subsides and economic activity remains solid. But the company says a slowdown could still be positive for bonds since the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates more aggressively. PIMCO favors intermediate duration bonds, such as uh, the five-year Treasury securities, which are expected to gain value due to lower interest rates. And the outlook is cloudier, however, for longer duration bonds, which could be negatively affected by U.S. fiscal and trade policies. PIMCO says that no matter who wins the election in November, U.S. deficits will be the biggest loser. And one step forward and one step back in solving the mystery of Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, uh, a new HBO documentary, Money Electric, The Bitcoin Mystery, directed by Colin Hoback, names Peter Todd as the elusive creator. But Todd has come out and said he is not uh, Satoshi, he, and, and that uh, being accused of being irresponsible and and putting his life in danger. Hoback told CNN he is not surprised by Todd's denial and remains confident in his conclusion. The director said they made their case to Todd for the film and his reaction was more telling than the evidence. And a stock market rally in China is fizzing out. Market analysts say investors are reacting to a lack of fiscal stimulus measures. Shares had uh, climbed after the Golden Week holiday, but then dropped back. 
In fact, benchmark indexes in China reported their biggest daily losses since the pandemic began. And this follows a highly anticipated news conference by China's National Development and Reform Commission. Investors were left disappointed by the lack of details on how to boost the world's second largest economy. China's growth has slowed as it continues to grapple with the property market slump and more. Now, last month, Lebanon was rocked by exploding pagers and walkie-talkies that targeted members of the Hezbollah terrorist group. But now, worries about those exploding devices are spreading way beyond Lebanon. The world's largest airline has banned pagers and walkie-talkies on flights. And now China is taking advantage of the risk and fears. Take a look at this. On China's tightly controlled social media, the censors have allowed this 2011 video of an exploding iPhone to go viral, drawing misleading comparisons to the deadly attacks in Lebanon. Thousands of pagers and walkie-talkies rigged with explosives. Chinese social media influencers are using the 13-year-old video, spreading rumors about Apple iPhones. Suggesting, without evidence, ordinary iPhones that haven't been tampered with can be remotely detonated, making them deadly weapons. You can't just make an iPhone blow up like that without putting explosives in it. We tracked down the man behind the original viral video, American YouTuber Chris Bowden. He says this iPhone was hooked up to a high-voltage machine. To make that little iPhone blow up, we had to have a power supply that was bigger than a refrigerator and weighs about half a ton. Fears that iPhones could explode are spreading quickly online. It's a very real threat, one user writes. Another says, if we want to protect our lives, we should use Chinese products. Some influencers are encouraging users to switch to Chinese brands. Cyber nationalism in China creates fertile ground for false attacks on foreign brands like Apple. These posts untouched by Beijing's army of online censors. If you had one of these iPhones... Former CIA operative Bob Bayer points out iPhones are primarily assembled in China. I mean, if the Chinese government were involved, they, they could rig any of these phones. Bayer says there's no evidence any phones are being weaponized. Any phone with a chip is insecure. You can blow somebody up if you can put in a detonator, an explosive. Now, the Justice Department considers breaking up Google, accusing the tech giant of having an illegal monopoly for over a decade. Here's this story. The Department of Justice has indicated it's considering breaking up Google. In a filing, DOJ says Google's illegal monopoly in search and advertising has resulted in pernicious harms for over a decade. It says Google's practices have made it difficult to compete with. What's really important in this, in this decision is they're tackling the search business where Google and Alphabet makes them the bulk of their money. Tech expert Ashley Monraj says this could have a major impact on Google's revenue, possibly forcing Google to license searching technology and let others access search data. Monraj says Google's amalgamation of different services gives advertisers a relatively easy and effective time. In a potential breakup scenario, advertisers could have to use many more third parties. I'm not sure that if we do get subservices, or smaller services, they would be as widely available and functional as, as Google ad service and different Google services were. The DOJ is exploring a number of remedies to what it calls Google's monopoly. Google says, quote, DOJ's radical and sweeping proposals risk hurting consumers, businesses, and developers. It says they hurt user privacy, innovation, advertising effectiveness, and Google applications themselves. Google can appeal the verdict of any lawsuit, leading to a lengthy years-long court battle. Meanwhile, a legal setback for Bayer has sent stocks tumbling. Washington's top court has said it would review a case alleging exposure from products made by the company's uh, Monsanto unit harmed people at a school. 
Previously, a state appeals court had ha handed Bayer a legal victory in the case when it overturned a $185 million award. It had found flaws in the case where plaintiffs alleged they suffered from exposure to chemicals. Bayer has been fighting numerous challenges over alleged and negative health effects from uh, exposure to its Monsanto products, including Roundup weed killer. Uh, shares of the German life sciences company fell about 7%. And the Japanese owner of casual wear giant Uniqlo is projected to beat its own forecast. And this would be the third straight year of record profits. Fast uh, retailing's profit in the 12 months uh, through August likely rose 24% from a year earlier. Um, this is based on data from LSEG. The brand has made progress in Western markets and its business in China is recovering. COVID lockdowns impacted sales in China. So the company focused on expansion in North America and Europe. Now, in China, the company has been scaling back store openings and addressing underperforming locations. The company is expected to release its earnings report tomorrow. And Amazon Pharmacy is expanding. The company says its same-day delivery of medication will cover nearly half of the U.S. in 2025. The e-commerce giant has announced its plans to bring prescription delivery to 20 more cities next year. And that includes Boston, Dallas, Minneapolis, Philadelphia, and San Diego. The service is offered through the Amazon Pharmacy section of its website and app. Now, speaking of Amazon, October 8th and 9th are Amazon's prime big deal days. NTD Shar Marshall takes a look into how the Prime Day sales strategy has affected Amazon's business and consumers. Amazon puts a lot into advertising its Prime Big Day deals. It offers a big variety of discounts, deals, and offers exclusive to Amazon Prime customers. In 2014, the planning of the sales event was so secretive within the company that it was given a code name, D1. The 48-hour sale has been growing ever since. Amazon doesn't release too many specific sales numbers of its Prime Days, but business is expected to increase. July 2024's Prime Days set a record in consumer spending of $14 billion, up 11% year over year. Over 53% of Amazon Prime Day shoppers waited for the sale to purchase items. Big brands also take advantage of the July and October event days, in preparing for the holiday shopping season and to get a lead on the competition, 53% of leading brands expect to increase their e-commerce spending for Amazon Prime Days, according to McKinsey. Since the sales event's inception, advertising spending by brands and marketers has gone way up, with global ad spending up 496%. And cost per click increased 66%. This has resulted in advertising attributed sales revenue growing by 468%. It's probably a good time to stock up on Halloween or holiday season items. The sales end October 9th at midnight. Sean Marshall, NTD News. All right, on to markets. Wall Street's three main stock indexes closed higher today. Uh, investors digested Federal Reserve meeting minutes ahead of September inflation data and earnings report. Alphabet shares fell, uh, not uh, unsurprising, not surprising here, on fears that the U.S. would break up Google. While most of the S&P 500's 11 industry sectors rose, concerns about Google did cast a shadow on communication services. Uh, stocks held uh, roughly steady right after the Fed's September meeting minutes. Uh, that's where they showed a substantial majority of, the, of officials supported a half-point rate cut. However, there was broader agreement the Fed would not commit to any particular pace of cuts. And investors were also monitoring for potential damage from Category 5 Hurricane Milton uh, due to make landfall in Florida on Wednesday. All right, that's all happening today on Business Matters. Uh, Carrie, Fiona? Sounds like lots of good news for Amazon and Uniqlo. That's right. Yeah, so one interesting, interesting thing about uh, these Amazon Prime Day sales uh, is that they do actually offer real discounts on certain products because I have been monitoring a couple of products over a long period of time. So I know like the prices that these products are usually listed as 
And I did check on them during these sales events, and they did get a, a pretty good discount. Hey, would you look at that? Great news for those shoppers, huh? Yeah, indeed. Well, with the holiday season starting already, you got Halloween into Thanksgiving, and then, of course, the big holiday season uh, for gift giving. Yeah. You never, uh, never get started too early. That's right. Time to stock up. I'd say uh, September will be a bit too early, but October is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the report, Don. See you tomorrow. All right.